Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial. In this video, we're going to have a look at how you can add booking functionality to your website with the help of a set of JET plugins. This is a step-by-step -step tutorial and I'm going to explain to you every single step you need to take in order to achieve the end result. That looks like that. You have a custom post type in which you have your posts, which are in our case rooms. They are called rooms and we are able to book every single of these rooms. More than that, we're able to set the check in, check out period and using the archive pages, filter out the options that are already not available. Plus, once you have some orders, you are able to manage and edit all of the orders that have been made on your website by your visitors right from your dashboard. Also, you get a ton of settings for your forms. You're able to create them from scratch just the way you like and also customize the notification types that include the send email option, which is going to help you to automate this process. All right, without any further ado, no more talking, let's dive right in. But before we start with the actual tutorial, let me give you a quick overview of all the steps that we're going to need to take to achieve the end result. So first we are going to need to create the post type which will contain all of the items that will be available for booking. In my example I'm using rooms post type as the post type with my items and my items will be rooms. Then we're going to add all the needed meta fields, all of the features that our items are going to have, all of the units, if you're planning on having multiple units of these items, what units are, I'm going to explain to you a little later. And also, you're going to need to create listings so you later can display these items on the archive pages. And the second post type that we need to create, which will keep our orders will be called orders post type or you can give it any other name and this post type will keep the information about every single order that is being made on your website about every single booking then we need to make these two post types work together and for that we will need to create a booking table this booking table is going to make sure that later in the orders post type you get all of the orders and the info that your users put into the booking form is being stored in the orders post type. Then we create a booking form, adding all of the necessary fields and also linking it to a booking table and as a result making it record uh, the info from this form to the orders post type. So this info that your users will put in this booking form will go as the order details. Once we're done with that, we can go and create a single post template for your item, like for a room in our case. And we're also going to insert a form in there. So once the user views the particular item, they can book this room on the same page. Once we're done with that, we can create a filter and put it on our archive page. On the archive page, there is going to be a listing grid that will be displaying our items and with the help of the filter we're going to be able to filter out those rooms that are already booked for particular dates. So I hope now it will be easier for you to follow this tutorial. Let's get started. On my website I have already pre-made the rooms post type. Let's have a look. So to create a new post type we need to go to Jet Engine, Post Types and click on add new and you're going to be taken to the actual post type editor. But here I have this one that I'm going to use rooms, click edit, just going to show you what I've added there. So what we need to pay attention to here is the meta fields. By the way, now with Jet Engine 2.0, you can organize your meta fields a lot better using tabs. And if you want to learn more about that and everything new that has been added to Jet Engine with the version 2.0, check out our Jet Engine 2.0 overview on our channel and learn more about it. We're now going to proceed to the rooms post type and what you should do here is to go to every individual post and fill in all of those meta fields that you have created while creating the post type. There we go, we have filled all of those in. Then here we have also the units manager. Creating units for your specific post is a way to tell 
the plugin that you have actually multiple rooms of such type. So basically, if you add units, it means that this is not one particular room that a person can book. This is actually a type of the room. And you have multiple units available. Like that. You can add a number and you can change the title if you want. It also means that once at least one of these units is not booked, this particular room, or it's better to say room type, going to appear in the filter results when you will be filtering by check in check out date. Because you will have at least one unit available, which means that the user can still book this unit. Once that is done and you're finished with all the meta fields and the units, go to the listings and create a listing. So we can later present this particular room in the archive when we'll be creating the archive page. All right, for now, it's pretty much it for the rooms post type. Now we need the orders post type in order to keep track of our orders. Here it is. Booking order is the post type that I have created to perform that function. And let me show you how it looks from the jet engine dashboard. So here in the post types for the order post type that's going to keep track of your orders, you just create a pretty much blank post type. There is nothing in it. There is no matter fields that you can later fill in. You do not need any of that. Just give it a name and click save. Because all of the info that is going to be added to that post type is going to be created by the booking table. And if you go to Jet Engine, you're going to see Apartment Booking. This is what we need for now to create the booking table. Let's click on it. And it takes us right here where we have the general settings. Let's have a look at that first. So these are the table columns. You can add as many as you need and put any type of info that you want to have there. By the way, the order ID is a sort of a necessary field in here. And the user email pretty much as well. If you later want to have the access to the email address of the people who have booked something on your website. And if you also want to send them notifications or any other type of emails. Okay, I'm done adding the fields. Now let's see what else we have here. Related post type. Here you should put the name of uh, the post type that you have created to keep track of the orders which in our case is booking order. And here we have to put in the post type that contains those items that will be available for booking, in our case, rooms. And here you put in the name of the column in which you want to store the order ID. What it means that now the meta field with the name order ID will be added to this post type. And it will be filled in once you have a new booking on your website. And in the second tab, which is called labels, you're able to change the default labels to the ones that you need. By the way, there is an important thing that you have to remember. Once you fill this table in and you want to save, make sure that you won't need any changes, that you have made no mistakes, that everything is filled in correctly. And this table currently contains all the info that you want. Because once you click save and update table, you won't be able to edit it in the WordPress dashboard again. You will need to go to your database and drop the entire table. And after that, you will have to create it from scratch. So before you click this button, make sure you have made no mistakes. And yes, you can go and see this table that you have created in your database anytime. So our table is done. Then in the form editor, you create the form and add the fields that you later will be able to connect to the columns in your table. But let's have a look at all of those one by one. The first field that you have is hidden and it is supposed to stay that way. And please don't delete it because this is how the post ID is going to be saved to the table and you'll be able to keep track of what rooms are being booked. Then you create just some generic fields like your email, your name, phone number. Also one important field, one really important field that you have to put into this form is check in, check out dates. You can also change the layout settings in here. But what's important about it is that 
It will help you to keep track of the periods for which certain rooms are being booked. Then, of course, you add the submit button, but we will also need one more hidden field. Not only the post ID, but also the field for the order ID. In the type, select hidden. In the field name, it will be order ID. Then click apply changes. Then in the notification settings, you should create a new notification and in the type choose insert post. Creating this notification will allow the booking plugin to create a new entry in your booking order post type. So type insert post, post type booking order, that particular post type that you have created to keep all of your orders. The post status, it is better to set draft or pending review or maybe private. Then the next notification that we need to have a look at is apartment booking. Type apartment booking. Then apartment ID field has to be room ID, which is current post ID. Then the name of the check in check out date field. You are getting this info from here. So here's the room ID, here's the dates. So you simply take these names and put them here. Also here you'll see the list of the table columns that you have added to your booking table. Don't forget to assign specific form fields to corresponding table columns. Then you can proceed adding more notifications depending on your needs, but we're going to have a look at just one more. Send email. And here you can select to what email you want to send uh, this particular message. Then select the name of the field in which the visitor has to type in their email. Also choose the needed option from the reply to field. Here you can also fill in the subject, the name of the sender and the sender's email address. Then using macros, you can create a template for the email. Then click apply changes and save your form. Now it is time to create a single page template for our room. So in order to create a single page template, go to Crocoblog, my library, and here you'll be able to access the theme parts. Now I have created a single room template and I have created the layout for my post. And I have also added a booking form. Adding a booking form to your page is super simple. You simply type in form in the Elementor panel and it's going to show you the available widgets and you just drag it and drop it on a page wherever you need. And what you get is the ability to choose from the forms that you already have created on your website and you just style it the way you like. Now, once we're done with those settings, let's see how this form actually records all the data that we put in it in our table. And here we can select the check in check out dates like that. And this is the period for which this room is going to be booked. Now let's go to the dashboard and see what changes have been made. Then let's go to booking order. And here it is, the latest booking made on your website. Click edit. And you'll be able to see the info of this order, like check in, check out date, user email, because we have connected this field, this column in the table with the field from the booking form. This is why it saves this info here, info about the email and also the apartment ID. And you can edit that data. For example, if you need to change the period of the visitor's stay or you need to change the email or the name or any other data from any other field that you create, you can do that and then simply click save and this order is going to be updated. So since everything is working properly, we can go and create the archive template, which is going to showcase all of our items. And we can also put a filter in there that is going to help to filter out those items that are not available for booking anymore. So let's start with the filter. Let's go to smart filters and you can either click add new or go to smart filters. So creating this type of filter is pretty simple. All you need to do here is set the filter type to date range, set filter by and leave it as metadata. And then in the query settings, type in the following query variable, check in underscore checkout. And you're pretty much set. Save this filter and let's go and create the archive template. Go to Crocoblock. 
My Library and click Add New button to create a new archive template. Here create the desired layout and then look for the listing grid and drop it on the page. And in the list here choose the needed listing that you have created, which showcases your rooms. All right, and then let's look for date range filter and drop it here in this section. So we can now filter these items by date. Choose the needed filter. This filter for set jet engine because this is the listing grid that we want to filter. And all the other settings are up to you. Then let's see how it's all working on the actual website. There is our listing and let's try and choose some dates in here. So on my website, all of the units of this room have already been booked for the period from the 8th of August till the 20th of August. Now let's click check and the filter is going to filter out this room because all of the units are already booked and this room is not available for booking anymore. So we have walked you through all of the basic steps you need to know in order to add a booking functionality to your website with the help of a set of JET plugins. If you want to learn more or have any specific question, check out our knowledge base on krakoblock.com. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Thank you so much for watching.